You're listening to Rabbi Arya Wolby, Director of Torch, the Torah Outreach Resource Center of Houston. This is the Jewish Inspiration Podcast. All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Jewish Inspiration Podcast. On October 7th, the world changed. The world we live in, the Jewish world, changed forever. Because we realized that it's not enough for us to just be out and about in the world. We have an obligation to feel a pride in being Jewish, not to hide it. I saw yesterday a clip of an individual who was out in Thailand. He already finished his army service in the IDF. And he was vacationing like many soldiers do. They go to the Far East, they go here, they go there. And he was out in Thailand and he is having a good time. He showed pictures of his stay. And then suddenly he sees a bunch of Israelis gathered together and some of them are crying. They're looking at their phones. So he figures there's something going on. He looks at the phone and all he sees were 800 Israelis are dead. So at the time is what they knew. He's like, what? He looks more into it, and he sees that there was a terrible, terrible attack. So what does he say? He says, I am not staying here when my brothers over there are suffering. That's not the way we are. Packs his bags, books his flight back to Israel, and joins the IDF as a reservist. Because that's what we do. When something happens, we're concerned for one another. I can't continue my vacation. I can't continue my party when someone else is suffering. We embarked on a mission here at Torch in this podcast to share different aspects of Jewish pride. What makes us proud? People are talking a lot. This is the talk on the street now. People are talking a lot about Jewish pride. You have to be proud to be Jewish. But what are we proud about? We have already shared seven different nuggets. I want to share an eighth. And that is, is that we are the people of kindness. You will not find a people who are more generous and kind, not only with their own, but with the entire world like the Jewish people are. The most incredible, the most giving, the most incredible, the most giving, the most kind, that not only that we are kind, but the way in which we're doing that act of kindness is also with kindness. What does that mean? So I want to share with you a couple of things that are going on. So firstly, and I'll tell you, because my, my mind has been blown since, since October 7th when I've seen the, the, the stories, heard the stories, watched the stories unfold of the kindness of the Jewish people. It's just like, it's mind-boggling, mind-boggling. So I'll start with the simple story I saw yesterday. A guy who has a yacht club. People rent boats and they go take a yacht out to the, uh, to, into, the, into the Mediterranean. It says October 7th, his business went from 100 to zero. Zero. What happened? Who's going to go out now for a nice, you know, a nice water experience when we're fighting a war? When we lost more than 1,200 people in a day, in a morning. He says, who's, who's going now to go? Nobody's thinking that way. So he says he doesn't know what to do. He's like, you know, and he's and he special. He says the phone's dead in a, in in an instant, dead. Not getting any 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 traction. One day, he gets a phone call from one of his regular clients, who was a reserve elite elite unit reservist. He was in Gaza, and he's been fighting for a couple of weeks. And he's home for a 24-hour break. He says, I need to clear my head. 
can I rent a yacht? Can I go out to the sea? She says, sure. And he sees that this was like such a, 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 a relief for this soldier that he can go out and be out on the water and to just clear his mind before he goes back into war. See, he said at that moment, he decided that his yacht club is going to be free for any soldier who needs. At the time that this video was already released, over 1,300 soldiers and their families went out with him. Free. You see, because sometimes people think that acts of kindness means that I'm going to help an old lady with her bags, help them cross the street. That's also kindness. Me, I have a yacht club. What, what, what kindness am I doing with that to give them a discount? He found a way to utilize his entire existence to help more soldiers. And there's another, and this is just an individual. It's not a business. It's not a how many people have contributed to buying more vests for soldiers. And I know myself because I myself did a campaign. I did a private campaign. I, a, a commander from the IDF called me up, a friend of mine, and he says, listen, it's a big problem. First is they called up 300,000 reservists. You know what that means? They don't have equipment for 300,000 soldiers. That's on top of the 170,000 soldiers they have active. That's 470,000 soldiers. That's a half a million. It's unbelievable numbers. We're not talking about food. We're talking about basics. Beds. Vests. Watches. So he called me up for a bunch of different things. Radios. Because everything goes to the front lines. Now, those who are in Judea and Samaria, who are patrolling, securing neighborhoods, what's with them? Well, all the equipment was sent to the front lines. They don't have equipment now. They don't have radios. They don't have watches. By the way, it's very interesting. Watches, we think, is a silly thing, right? What's the big deal with watches? Who carries a watch? Nobody carries a watch anymore because we all have phones. Right, but in the military, you can't carry your phone. So you don't know anything without a watch. Nobody has watches anymore. So suddenly they had to get tens of thousands of watches. Just small things. But there's an organization that decided that we need to do the extras for the soldiers. Like... Giving them, a, giving them a place to relax. This guy opened up a tent right outside of Gaza that whenever soldiers leave, they can get massages. They have massage chairs. They have game rooms. They have activities for them to do, like fun things for them to do. An entire tent filled with it. Hundreds and hundreds of soldiers stopping by every day. Laundries, that laundromats that they opened up on trucks for them to clean their clothes hot tubs, all portable. For what? It's for my brothers and sisters to help, to assist. And that's not, this is, uh, talking about the simple things. Simple ways to put a smile on someone's face. Do you know that there are organizations in the Jewish community that literally handle every single type of need you open up there's a book that's about this thick when i left israel in jerusalem of all of the different free loan organizations free loan i'm not talking about financial loans i'm talking about you have tables and chairs you can lend it out for free you have extra tables and chairs anybody who wants anybody who needs you have a bar mitzvah you have a a bris you have what any type of tables and chairs a, a, a free loan Maybe people can open up. Oh, I need, there's a special amulet for women who are 
you know, to have an easier labor. So it's a very powerful thing. So someone once spent the money and bought it. Very unique. So now it's available for anybody who needs. Anybody who's in their ninth month can call up and borrow the amulet so they can wear it for labor. It's like, you think like, what? Yes, because we're not people who live for ourselves. And if you look in a Jewish community, I'm telling you, the, the book was this thick. Yellow pages like of different things that anything you can imagine. You know, when a baby's when a baby has a bris, there's a special pillow that we use. About 150 different free loans for that pillow. Someone once went out and bought it, or for the clothes for the baby, or for bridal gowns. Bridal gowns are expensive. Right? So why should someone pay? you know, $10,000 for the bridal gown and someone else spent that, donated it to this free loan and now you can come and feel like a queen and it costs you cleaning expense. Why? It has to be custom tailored by, you know, Louis Vuitton in uh, wherever. You know what I mean? It's Kindness means that we look beyond ourselves. And that's one of the greatest virtues of the Jewish people. We look beyond ourselves. How can I help another Jew? And wherever in the world you go, you need assistance, look up a Jewish community. They're there to help. We're there to help one another. That's what we're about. And that's what we should be proud of. That as a people, anywhere you go, we were together in Israel. How many amazing experiences have we had of just like this is this is unbelievable like I'll, I'll give you I'll give you another example we went near the tomb of the patriarchs and matriarchs in Hebron we were at a restaurant not a restaurant like a pizzeria kosher pizza and I tell them what I want to order and I order it and like okay and how many soldiers do you want to sponsor Okay, what's that? I said, well, what we do is we give you an opportunity because there are so many soldiers patrolling this area. Hebron is a hot hot spot. So that when a soldier comes, they have hot food to eat. So they can, so when you buy your, so just add two more slices for the next soldier or a pie for their, for their, you know, for the group or their drinks. And one after another, I watched that. Not only I did, I saw every single person. And they note it down and they they write it down and they have it ready for next soldier come. Sorry, you're not paying for that. Someone paid for you. It's an unbelievable thing. Where do you have that? Anywhere. Tell me, tell me a place in the world that you have that. You don't. You don't have that. King David teaches us in Psalms. Olam chesed yibane. The world was created through kindness. And the world continues to exist through kindness. And we think, if you listen to the media, you, you'll become an anti-Semite. You can't listen. You can't listen to the media. It's poison. It's absolute poison. And you can see it now more than ever. Oh, they're targeting civilians. It's not true. It's a lie. They're, doing every, they're having the most ethical war ever where it's taking them double the time triple the time quadruple the time to avoid any civilian casualties or injuries but the world doesn't report it the world let me tell you just yesterday they were attacking a certain facility the israeli forces and they see motion inside the facility, typically would be terrorists. It was terrorists. But you know what they did to these wicked, evil people? They sent a four-year-old girl to walk right in front of them. So the soldiers successfully eliminated the terrorists and took that four-year-old girl. And I can show you the picture of them taking care of all of her wounds, all of her injuries, that she had prior to all of this 
feeding her. You see soldier, a bunch of Israeli soldiers near this four-year-old girl, bandaging her, caring for her. Tell me what army in the world would do that. What army in the world would do that? On a totally different note, my son was traveling yesterday and we needed a package brought from where he typically stays in yeshiva to where he was landing. So I posted, anybody know someone going from point A to point B? How long do you think it took for that package to be picked up and dropped off by someone who happened to see it, who knows somebody, who this or that or that, help us, help us out? It took less than 20 minutes and we had someone 1,800 miles away who went to pick up the stuff and dropped it off. Why? Because that's what a kind people do. And that's one story of a million stories a day where we're demonstrating Olam Chesed Yabani, we're building the world through kindness. We're trying to be God-like. What God does in His world is kindness. And what we do in our world is kindness. We're trying to emulate God. We're trying to be God-like. So if someone confronts you, you're an H-E-B in the grocery store, and someone says, you're Jewish? You're like, yes, and I'm proud to be Jewish. Well, why are you proud to be Jewish? Because we're the people of kindness. That's way number eight, my friends. Be proud. Be passionate. Find ways to be kind. Find your own way, your unique way. A small, simple way. Because that's what we're made of. We're a kind people. We're a loving people. We're a caring people. My dear friends, Hashem should bless us all. That we should only be givers of good to one another. We should never, ever be, God forbid, a a reason for pain for anyone else. If you look in our Torah, you will see story after story after story. Kindness, kindness, kindness. That's what we're about. Hashem should bless us all. Hashem should protect us all. Amen. Police officers at the rally at Washington, D.C. were asked, how did you find the Jewish march today? How did you find the Jewish people? Listen to what the officer said. He says, I've been working the beat for over two decades. I got more thank yous today than I've received my entire career and that will last me for my entire career. No violence, no burnings of, 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 uh, of flags, peaceful, loving people. That's not only in Washington, D.C., by the way. At MetLife Stadium, every seven years, there's a massive Jewish event. And that Jewish event is the Siyam Hashas. The Siyam Hashas is the conclusion of the entire Talmud, 2,711 pages of Talmud. And it's a big, big celebration. You have just in Met Life is over 100,000 people in one place. But then you have in other stadiums and other places. And in, 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 in Houston, we had probably five, 600 people celebrating. We have the Torch Dafyomi that's been, uh, been pr- providing Dafyomi since 2004 by Rabbi Nagel. It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing to see so many Jews. And the same question was asked to the police officers who were securing the facility at MetLife Stadium. And they said not only there wasn't one altercation, not one report, not one incident, the kindness, the love, the appreciation. He says, you know how many people asked me if I had something to drink? Do you know how many people asked me if I wanted to eat something? Well, you're at an event. You ever go into into Energy Stadium to watch the Texans game and ask the security guard, hey, did you have something to drink today? Did you have something to eat today? You're probably standing here for eight hours already. That's exactly what we're supposed to be made of. This is our calling. We are the people of kindness. This is what we are. And you look at organizations like the Bikr Cholim you have in New York. You talk about High Lifeline, which deals with cancer patients. You talk about organizations like A Time, 
or um, Boney Olam, helping couples with infertility. You're talking about Hatzalah, which is emergency medical response. You're talking about Chaverim, which is other types of emergency, non-medical assistance. You talk, you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of organizations dealing with every single type of life event as a Jew. They're there for you. It's the, and the bigger the Jewish communities grow, the more services. And by the way, they're all volunteers. They're all volunteers. It's the most remarkable thing. How do you say, how, you know, we have now in Houston, we have two ambulances. The ambulances have been used well over a hundred times already. We just inaugurated them in not even not even three months ago, and it's not only for the Jewish community. So who pays for it? People love it, so people help it. People say, "I want to be part of it." We got a phone call, a random phone call one day, where someone said, "How much does it cost to sponsor an ambulance?" We told them how much it costs. They said, "No problem. Send us wiring information. We want to be part of this. We love what you do. We're a kind people." We cannot sell ourselves short. Hashem charges us with that responsibility. By the way, any hospital you walk into in New York City has a special room called the Bikur Cholim room. Bikur Cholim means visiting the sick. But there's a special room that they pay rent for in these hospitals that for any Jewish patient and their families, there's always going to be hot food for them. Right, you go, you visit a sick person, family member, or relative, a friend. Like, oh, I have to eat. I didn't. Yeah, I, I just realized I got off a plane, didn't get a chance to eat. You're sitting in some hospital. Go to the Beaker Holum room. Go to the Beaker Holum room. They'll have fresh food that was cooked that morning. You have snacks, and some of them you'll even have chargers for your phone. They'll have the things that you need, but you forgot you needed. They'll have books for you to read. They'll have candles for you to light for Shabbos. This is what we're about. We're a kind people. And this is our greatness. This is the flag that we should carry, the banner we should carry every day of our lives with pride. So my dear friends, let's go get him. You've been listening to the Jewish Inspiration Podcast, a Torch production. Become a supporter at torchweb.org because your assistance enables more Torah learning around the globe. To find more lessons offered by Torch, please visit torchpodcasts.com.